I'd like for us to talk about something else in Joshua, the end of the book, before we go on to other Old Testament passages, and especially this week, some New Testament passages. But in chapter 23 and 24 of Joshua, it's really his farewell address to this nation of younger Israelites. And in chapter 24, there are at least five points that he makes that are really motives for service. Um, he gives us an impact of that really in verse 14 as a concluding statement that I'd like to begin with and work our way back to, to verse number 5. In verse 14 of chapter 24, Joshua says, Now therefore fear the Lord, serve him in sincerity and in truth, and put away the gods which your father served on the other side of the river in Egypt and serve the Lord. It's not listed as an option. It's not an if you want to, you can actually serve God. It's something that is stated as a definite. You need to fear God and you need to serve Him. And it's not something that's just relegated to a particular few. It's not to the elite of Israel. It's to everyone. But he mentions a how and a what involved in this statement as well. The how was in sincerity and in truth. And both of those things are vital. You can have somebody that's very sincere about what they believe, but if what they believe is not really true, that sincerity really is of little va no, no value at all. What if you have somebody that has all the truth and those facts down, but the motives they have are really not pure motives? Um, they're using their knowledge, perhaps, of God's Word to get ahead or to make a name for themselves. That's what the Pharisees did in the time of Jesus. Serve God... Fear God, but serve Him in sincerity and in truth. But the second thing, the what, if you boil it down to one particular thought, is remove distractions. Don't allow anything to come between you and God. And it, for these individuals, it was put away the gods which your fathers served on the other side of the river and in Egypt and serve the Lord. Can't go back. Uh, can't turn your faith in God into something that's less. Faith in some some kind of activity, occupation that takes precedence over the kind of commitment that you need to have to God. That being the case, what are the five motives for service that he actually mentions? Well, the first one is found in verse 5. It really deals with their deliverance. I sent Moses and Aaron. I plagued Egypt according to what I did among them. Afterward, I brought you out. That's just like saying, I, I delivered you from Egypt. That's really what he's stating. I brought you out of Egyptian bondage. For us, if you start thinking about the kind of del deliverance that we have uh, in Christ, you know, what they had in a physical way is something we have very much in a spiritual way. Uh, the deliverance. Uh, think about the, um, the destroyer passing over the houses of those Israelites where they had the blood on the doorpost and the lintel of the doors. Think about the statement that Peter makes when he talks about the fact that we, as Christians, were not redeemed with gold or silver, anything that's corruptible. We were redeemed with the precious blood of Christ. That blood is still something that's present. God has delivered us. God has brought us out. God has made us into individuals that are endeavoring to live out of love and obedience to Him because of what He's done for us. So deliverance is something that He reminds them. In the second place, verse number 6 and verse 7, I brought your fathers out of Egypt, and you came to the sea, and the Egyptians pursued your fathers with chariots and horsemen to the Red Sea. They cried out to the Lord, and he put darkness between you and the Egyptians, brought the sea upon them and covered them. And your eyes saw what I did in Egypt. Then you dwelt in the wilderness a very long time. After that deliverance from bondage, it looks like now their backs are against uh, the ocean and, and you've got um, the chariots of, of animosity and hatred in the Egyptians wanting them back as slaves, breathing down their neck. Besides that deliverance, when Josh reminds them that God put himself between you and the Egyptians to protect you until you could cross over through the Red Sea, there is a, an area of separation, separation from danger. Not necessarily separation from temptation, but separation from the danger that that temptation brings. Because the love for God should keep us mind, reminded of the power to get out of those tempting times in life. 
But the motives for service, number one, deliverance from the slavery that these people had been in in the prior generation. But number two, the separation between that God put between His children, the children of Israel, and the Egyptians, allowing them to escape. Then down in verse number 8. I brought you into the land of the Amorites who dwelt on the other side of the Jordan, and they fought with you. But I gave them into your hand that you might possess their land, and I destroyed them from before you. Motives for serving God, the deliverance for us, the deliverance from sin, um, the separation from danger, um, the victory that we have in Christ. Um, victory that actually Paul writes about in, um, in Romans chapter 6, beginning with about verse 14. Notice what he says. Sin shall have no more dominion over you, for you are not under law but under grace. What then? Shall we sin because we are not under the law but under grace? Certainly not. Do you not know that to whom you present yourselves slaves to obey, ye are that one's slaves whom you obey, whether of sin leading to death or obedience leading to righteousness? But God be thanked that though ye were slaves of sin, yet ye obeyed from the heart that form of doctrine to which you were delivered, and having been set free from sin, you became slaves of righteousness. Previously in this chapter, he said, We are buried with Christ through baptism into death, that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we also should walk in newness of life. Our old man is crucified with him, that the body of sin might be done away with, that we should no longer be slaves of sin. It's interesting that prior to that separation, God coming between the chariots and the children of Israel and stopping them from being attacked, Prior to that, when the children of Israel find themselves there against the waters of the Red Sea, they're, they're moaning and complaining to Moses, you brought us out here to die. We should have stayed in Egypt. Don't you remember the hardship in Egypt? Don't you remember the danger? Don't you remember the, um, the problems associated with being those slaves where labor uh, was something that was given day in and day out and the, the scars that you have on your back that shows how terrible those taskmasters were? You want to go back to that? Situations that are motivations for service for us, we do not want to return to a life without God, without Christ, without hope, without forgiveness, without redemption. We want to be individuals that understand that there is victory that's found in Christ, a victory that we cannot accomplish on our own. And so God said, I destroyed them from before you. You had to fight, but I destroyed them from before you. Down in verses 9 and 10. When Balak the son of Zippor, king of Moab, rose to make war against Israel and sent and called Balaam the son of Beor to curse you, I would not listen to Balaam. Therefore he continued to bless you. So I delivered you out of his hand. Um, it's more than just victory. It's more than just separation from um, danger. It's, it's, it's even more than deliverance from slavery. Here in these verses, it's, it's really a a protection that goes beyond the physical that um, he has not allowed these individuals to curse Israel. When Nehemiah goes back to rebuild the city, uh, when the nation has come out of Babylonian captivity and a remnant's come back to Israel, and there are people around that do not want to see the city rebuilt, and they have all sorts of statements that they make against Nehemiah, the work that he's doing, but there's a statement that's made in, uh, in Nehemiah chapter 4. And verse 15, it really kind of fits the situation that Joshua is describing. The statement is made that God brought their plot to nothing. They continued to build. The plot of those around Israel that are recorded here in Joshua, that he reminds them of that they want to, to have, have a, uh, a war not just physically, but they want Israel to be cursed by individuals that they deem to be prophets. God does not allow Balaam to do that. Uh, the plot, the words against God's people, God brings to naught. Now we can be ridiculed, we can be criticized, all sorts of thing, things can happen in a negative way. Does not stop us from living for the purpose of being as Christ-like as we possibly can. 
So there are several things involved in this motives of service, but the last one, verse, uh, verse number 13. I've given you a land for which you did not labor and cities which you did not build, and you dwell in them. You eat of vineyards and olive groves which you did not plant. Sounds reminiscent of things that have been stated before that we've mentioned. What's the point? There is a possession that you have that you didn't earn. You couldn't be good enough to actually earn this. It's a gift. It's a heritage. But you still had to be involved in following the word of God to obtain it. Salvation for us will always be a gift. There's nothing that we can do to earn it. There's no sacrifice we can make that it can come close to atoning for our sins. Jesus did that. However, he expects us to be obedient. God expects us to be obedient. We just read those words in Romans chapter 6 about the obedience is something that's necessary. With all those things involved, those motives for service, therefore, fear the Lord, serve Him in sincerity and in truth. If any one of those five items are not remembered and included in this, this way that we serve God, there's some kind of item that's missing. Maybe it kind of uh, weakens the, the, the awe, the fear, the respect, the reverence that we have for God. Maybe it compromises truth. None of those should be the case in the life of the child of God. Motives for service out of Joshua's final address to the young nation of Israel as they have conquered the land. Please stay safe this week. We'll talk again soon.